what's up guys welcome back to the channel as you can see from the title and thumbnail this video is basically a video that I would recommend the top three modifications you should do for your F8X platform and the reason why I say this now is that I have an opportunity to drive my car stock now where it's really underwhelming and some of the modifications that I really miss are is really apparent now so one of the major modifications that I would recommend doing is suspension if you're into aesthetics and you're into making the car look a lot better lowering your F8X platform is something that would drastically change the appearance um, if you guys don't know when you first get a stock F8X the front ride height is absolutely way too high there's about three finger gaps that you could fit depending on how big your fingers are and also about a one finger gap in the rear obviously i think bmw really has a lot of the reasoning why they did it for that is for for the optimum performance that they could do but for consumers like us and also uh people that love the stance life so to say that's one of the things i would recommend and right now i'm in stock suspension i'm in sport plus and I can tell you this, it's very underwhelming. Uh, it doesn't ride that bad, but we're gonna deep dive into why I recommend getting a suspension. If you've been following this channel for a little bit, you've noticed that I've gone through many different suspensions, right? The first suspension that I've, I've come to really hate was the KW Haas kit. The Haas kit really means high adjustment spring kit, right? And it's something that I didn't like. In the beginning, I was on a budget, and if, if I knew what I knew now, I would have saved extra money and to dump that money into uh, saving up for a set of coilovers. And I've gone through two different sets of coilovers. Um, from my experience, if you're really into the track oriented, right, and you just don't care uh, about it being really aggressive, then the Bilstein B16s is your, uh, your choice. But if you're a daily driver and something that you, you wanna, not hate every day and you want something that's more composed and something that's more forgiving when you hit these really really bad imperfections on the roadways is that you look into the KW DDCs. They're a really expensive coilover suspension kit, but in the long term, it's gonna save you time and also money because you're not gonna have to reinstall uh, another suspension. And I've done that three times already, as you can see from this channel. But I will say, so, the ones that are listening to this carefully, if you have a stock suspension, I will say this, the KW DDCs are a lot more comfortable in comfort mode in all the other modes compared to stock suspension. If you hit these bumps and imperfections on the roadway on stock suspension, and I just hit it the, just, just before filming this, hitting a over the train tracks, it feels like I'm running over metal. You know, obviously you're hitting some railroad tracks, but the bumps that lead up to it, it feels like I'm running over metal. When you're in the KW DDCs, that gets a lot more composed. It doesn't feel like that. Uh, the way the suspension, the coilover absorbs the bumps and it just goes hand in hand. It feels, for me, I'm just so surprised that the KW DDCs is a proper coilover because when you hit these bumps, it doesn't feel like you're really that slammed. And I was, if you guys see my other videos where even right now I put B-roll over it, the car stanced out. It was stanced out. And it felt so good when I hit these bumps. Now when on stock suspension, it just feels really stiff and it feels, it really feels, um, I guess, underwhelming and, and not as comfortable as I expect to be. Um, when I first was, was gonna put the car back to stock, I expected the car to ride a little bit more like butter. Um, but I can tell you this, it is a little bit stiff and I can see why people didn't like this stock suspension. But trust me on this, if you guys have the budget and or can find it used, look into the KW DDCs. All right, so going into the second modification that you should do for your F8X platform, and I'll, I'll give you a hint right now, Yeah, you could barely hear an exhaust and you can hear how bad it doesn't really, it doesn't sound good. It just doesn't sound 
how a sports car should sound. And right now, if you guys could tell, I have my stock mid pipe in, stock rear box, which is the axle back, and it it doesn't sound good. So as you can hear from that clip, the car is fully back to stock. The only thing I have right now on the car is 15 millimeter spacers and my paint match calibers, which you can't really come, uh, can't really go back to unless I repaint it, which is unnecessary at this point. But as you can hear, the current tone of the of the car, it doesn't for me. It doesn't sound like a sports car. It doesn't sound like an M3 how it should be. Um, again, number two, the the main thing you should probably look into if you're on a budget and you don't want to do the full exhaust because a full exhaust system could cost you anywhere from four thousand plus. But if you're looking for that smooth tone and something that to really just amplify your driving experience, the Active Auto Work Eco Link Mid Pipe is your modification to do. Again, you're gonna have to cut up your stock mid pipe and also your uh, stock rear end, which you could pair it up together. But at that point, it really opens up the tone of the S55 platform. And me, this is what I think BMW should have uh, made the car sound like. Um, obviously, that was one of the biggest complaints that people had for the car. But once you add that on, it just it allows you to forget how awful it sounds. All right, so going into the third modification that you should do for your F8X platform, if it's completely stock, is intakes. So when you buy a turbo vehicle, you expect the whoosh sound, you expect the induction noise, you expect all that. But when you have a stock F8X, you barely hear any of that. And it's really underwhelming. It doesn't really feel like you have a sports car again. Um, a lot, again, a lot of these things that BMW did was for EPA number one, right? And also for what they considered to be the best performance uh, parts you could do for the car. Obviously, um, there's many different companies out there that made a lot of different performance parts where it really truly amplifies your driving experience. And I really say the word amplify because look, this car is, it's a joy to, to own, it's a joy to drive. And this is such a great vehicle, even at stock, but there's always things you can do to make it better. So when you when you get into a, a F8X, or even like for me, the F80, when I floor it, I expect to hear the, the suction of the air going into the turbos, into the engine. You don't really have any of that. And a lot of it, as you go onto the highway, you hear a little bit, very faintly, um, so as you can, as you follow this channel before, the first intake system that I had for this car was actually my Dynan intakes, which was basically a carbon fiber a housing with a set of uh, uh, cone intakes. It looked great underneath the hood, but again, it didn't really sound that loud to me, and it wasn't to a point where I felt um, happy about, which is why I upgraded from that to the even even Turi, uh intakes version two but that would be the next thing that i would do so a lot of these different mods you could find on the forums you could find on the forums you could find on people's instagram you could find on facebook marketplace and you could get it used at this point because the f8x platform has been around for quite a bit now so a lot of people are turning in their cars a lot of people are going into different platforms a lot of people are wrecking their cars too and they're selling their modified parts. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this video up. Again, I just wanted to make this video for the people that recently bought an F8X or people that have the F8X and haven't modified yet because they don't know which direction to go to. So hopefully this video is more informative and allows you to really understand uh, the priorities of what modifications that you should do. Again, with the charge pipes and all this other stuff, your car is pretty much stock, not tuned. You don't really need right away. It's more for aesthetics later on. If you go to car shows, um, but those are the top three modifications that I would do if I were to own a F80 again, which I currently do right now. But that's all I can say. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you could do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. It really helps my small channel grow. But other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video. Yeah. I'm sweating. Yeah. In 2010, thought I was doing something. And now I'm rapping with a crew or something. I guess the track don't really stick unless you...